All right, I am Lauren Gambino here for The Daily Quirk with Mark Evan Jackson, Craig Kakowski, and Mark Agliardi of the Thrilling Adventure Hour. What's it like to be here as a part of New York Super Week? It's a Any blast. Uh, I've been having a great time. It's I live here now, uh, so it was great to have all of my buddies come uh, to my new town and do the show that I've been doing for 10 years with them here. Uh, and the Super Week shows have been a lot of fun. Yeah, we love bringing it to New York uh, for our East Coast fans. They're so passionate and intense, and they never get to see us uh, in L.A. at Largo, where we normally play. So it's always cool to expose the show to a whole new group of fans. And to be here as part of you know Comic-Con and all that's going on is insane. If, if, if your viewers have never attended a Comic-Con, save up, do it. It's worth seeing at least once in your life. Um, it, words can't describe the level of energy and devotion and fandom that goes on. And it's lovely to see. My favorite thing about it is the cosplay. It's, it's seeing people that you know uh, probably lead fairly pent-up lives the other 364 <laughs> days of the year. And one day are like, I'm going all out. <laughs> I'm letting my freak flag fly, and I'm going to dress up as my favorite dude, and boy, do they. You always know that something great, you're about to see something great when uh, Jackson will we'll just be walking or going to whatever uh, a thing in Comic-Con, and Jack, you just hear from Jackson, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> and you're like, oh, something's good over there. Because there's no wrong answer. Like, yeah. sometimes it's good because the costumes are amazing. Sometimes it's good because the costumes are not amazing. <laughs> yeah. There was a mashup of Ronald McDonald and the Mighty Thor that I thought was particularly inspired. Oh, wow. wow. You wouldn't think you'd be able to pull that off, but uh, somebody <laughs> did. <laughs> My favorite so far was a little kid. It was the simplest costume. It was just a little kid in a full-size adult stormtrooper mask. Oh. So he looked like a bobblehead. Oh. Just the head. Just the head. <laughs> yeah. Like, and like his like little jeans and t-shirt and then just this enormous stormtrooper helmet. Yeah, that was fun. Sounds so funny. Um, so how did you guys get involved with Thrilling Adventure Hour? We'll start with you. Um, very early on, uh, at the very beginning, it was uh, originally a screenplay that Akron Blacker had written. Um, and they called a bunch of us over to uh, Blacker's house. We sat around and uh, read the script out loud just so that they could, they just wanted to do a sort of table read to hear how it sounded. And uh, it turned out great and they, liked it so we they wound up putting it on stage and uh asking all of us to join them in it any stories about how you got involved i got involved because of mark agliardi um craig kakowski and i were teaching at the second city in uh in hollywood when it was on melrose avenue next to the world famous hollywood improv and on wednesday nights the teachers would perform ben acker was in the writing program then he was teaching writing but i didn't know him at all and uh, one night after the the teachers performed mark agliardi said hey there's somebody i want you to meet and Ben Acker uh, came over and you know pitched this idea for a uh, western in space and a character called Sparks Nirvana Marshall on Mars. And one thing that improv teaches you to do is find yourself saying a lot of yes in life. And you know not you know it's very easy. And people too often go, I don't know that probably not. I don't think I'm gonna do it or whatever. And uh, and with improv you find yourself saying yes. And I was like, I'll read it. Yeah, let's do it. And the second I got there and read the script, it was clear like these guys know what they're doing. And uh, it's super smart, and uh, I was really looking forward to seeing any of any more worlds they had to offer. I'm also a trained improviser, and I said no the first two times. <laughs> <laughs> Acker had seen me in an improv show with Jackson, and he asked me to do this show, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know who you are or what this is. I, I said no a second time. Finally, he handed me a postcard, uh, and it had the names of Paul F. Tompkins, Paget Brewster, uh, Dave Gruber Allen, and Sam Levine on it. I'm like, oh, those are people. I know those people. My name was on that postcard. Yeah. I was like, I also know that guy. I mean, I've, yeah, I just improvised with him. But nothing special. And finally, I he said is not, yes. He's, he is not a people. He is, he is not a people. Or a people person. <laughs> or a person people. Aww. He's not wrong. Jackson, you're a person. Whatever. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the characters that you play on Thrilling Adventure Hour? We'll start with Mark. Uh, I'll tell you about the best one. We'll, we'll start first. You want to uh, talk about Croach first? <laughs> um, the world that I exist in is Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars, and uh, I play the, the title character. And he is, it's a Western set in space. So he's that cowboy that, as Ben and Ben often put it, um, doesn't have the luxury of, like in a Western movie, riding off into the sunset. You know, uh, defeating his foes, getting the girl, and riding off into the sunset. He's the marshal day in, day out. So he's always there, and more problems continually creep up for him to have to deal with. And he has, uh, his sidekick is sort of uh, 
uh, kind of a Tonto character, kind of a Mr. Spock, very logical, uh, which is Crunch the Tracker, played by Mark Agliarni. Yes. You want to talk about oh, that character? Oh, look at that handoff <laughs> there. I like that. Nice segue. Nice yeah, segue. good segue. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, that's, uh, I've been riding by his side um, and having adventures and learning about uh, humanity for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at one point, over the course of the show, a lot of insane things have happened with Sparks and Croach. Uh, we had together had a baby once. Uh, we've switched bodies. <laughs> we have full on kissed on the lips on stage. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, insanity. But uh, but it's been it's been a blast to uh, get to see these characters evolve the way that they have. Uh, I play Colonel TikTok, who is an Englishman who travels in time. I play Banjo Bindle Stuff, who is a millionaire hobo. Uh, and various Nazis. I've played every Nazi that we've, uh, we've had Most Nazis. on the show. Most Nazis. You're our go-to Nazi. Yes. yes. Yeah, well, any German, anything German, you look in the script and you're like, well, Craig's going to do that. Well, he's got that perfect German accent. Last night I was Wilhelm Chonklitz, <laughs> who is not a Nazi. Uh, but is, but a character. We don't know his politics. Yeah, I guess I, it never came up in the show, oddly it's enough. True. True. Yeah, uh, but he's very similar. Uh, some would say frighteningly similar to Augustus Gloop in uh, the Willy Wonka stories. <laughs> so that was the reference for that character. So, what are some other ways that you get into character for some of these roles? Like, how do you come up with the voices behind them? Uh, a lot of times, it's instantly uh, because we are told frequent. There are frequent. Um, performances where we're told, oh, we forgot to cast this very small part in the show. Go do it. And you're like, what? Oh, and just kind of run out on stage. Um, but a lot of it comes from Acker and Blacker just giving small bits of, uh, you know, they can say one or two words and that'll inform a voice. Uh, hmm. A lot of times it's, it'll be an impression uh, because a bad impression is the start of a specific character. Um, so like they told me, uh, this guy, Robert Mitchum, so I'm not really doing Robert Mitchum, but it's just whatever my version of it sounds like, and it becomes a character. It gives you some pointers. Yeah. yeah. I, I once uh, was given, uh, we, we used to do a feature called Tales from the Black Lagoon, which was about sort of noir Hollywood, sort of old Hollywood. And um, they gave me a character to do, and the only character clue that they gave was the word cocaine. <laughs> so they, they just wanted him bouncy and, and quick and like... And that was for the, lo the Lone Ranger, right? I think it was for the Lone Ranger. Yeah. They wanted him to play played under the guise of cocaine. <laughs> I pl we have another segment called Captain Laser Beam Me as a series of, uh, of teens or, or preteens that work for him. Uh, they're called the Adventure Kateers, and uh, I play Adventure Kateer Patrick. Uh, and I was just doing kind of a generic little kid voice, and the direction I got from uh, Ben Acker was... Uh, um, uh, fatter. <laughs> so ever since then, I've, uh, I've fattened up uh, Patrick considerably. He also has asthma and, uh, and a wake apnea. <laughs> as, I love that as you have made Patrick more and more just ridiculously beaten down by the world already at this young age, Acker and Blacker have taken the clue and been like, oh, you want him beaten down? Yeah. Great. We will add every version of beating down a child to give him the worst life possible that we can have. In addition to sleep apnea, he has wake apnea. And recently, <laughs> we found out your father was in jail. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Things yeah. are going to look up for Patrick, though. Don't you worry. I don't think so. Now, as all professionally trained improv artists, how much of it act out there is actual improv? Very little. 1%. Though last night it may have crept up to 2 or 3%. <laughs> oh, we were getting close to 4 or 5, yeah. I would say. <laughs> when you put Paul F. Tompkins and John Hodgman together, that's dangerous. Yeah. And they're going to <laughs> depart from the script. John Hodgman was given the, the one word direction last night uh, of Salinger uh, to inform his character. And he made a, uh, some edits on the script uh, that, that will make that performance forever memorable. Oh, yeah. We're, we're typically a clean show. <laughs> yeah. Like, we've been doing the show for 10 years, and for whatever reason, we just don't curse in the show. It's not really been a strategy. It's just the style and the feeling of the show. Right. And Hodgman came out with a mouth like a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were there any other memorable moments of other guest stars or other members of the core cast that have had to think on the fly, had to do some improv that really stand out to you? Um, yeah, those happen all the time. There's always... Uh, there, there's always those moments with people who don't really know the show, when, but will get guest stars and they're, they're game to come and play. 
and uh, they kind of just look around at this world, uh, and sometimes it'll click, not in the rehearsal, but in the performance. We've had a couple of people come in that are, they'll spin rehearsal just kind of looking around and hanging back, and then something goes, okay, I get the vibe of what this is, and they'll step forward. I realize now that's not a specific example of improvising <laughs> in it, that's just. I can remember one time back in the day when we were still at M Bar. Uh, that uh, Sam Levine, who is a person, um, <laughs> totally, a person. he's one of those people from that postcard. I know. Uh, he did not. Uh, he was outside chatting and and missed an entrance by a couple of minutes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I remember you taking the mantle, Craig. And I don't remember precisely what you said, but we, you know, initially it just felt awkward. And then you said something, and the, the audience was kind of like, well, "What's happening?" And then when Sam came sprinting through the very small supper club, it was it was clear to them that we had been vamping. Or... <laughs> yeah, the improv usually comes from just horrific mistakes that yes. we're making. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had Michael Sheen on recently from Masters of Sex, and he was a a, a villain in uh, Colonel TikTok. And at one point during Colonel TikTok, I had the line of like, "From the bottom of my English heart," and for some reason, the audience just started laughing at that. And I think realizing it of like, we're all these Americans just doing terrible English accents, and there's a legitimate Brit up there on oh, stage an with actor. us. And uh, and I said, for I am the most English person here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which got an additional laugh and kind of a, a weird look from Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's actually Welsh. He is not English. He's not English. English. So yeah. for, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I was the most English person on stage. Right. He kind of, the weird look that you got from Michael Sheen was he was like, he looked over to say like, you may very well be. Like, <laughs> none of my business. <laughs> so do you guys have any advice for some future guests that may want to be on the show? Ratchet down expectation. Uh, no, uh, come and play and, and enjoy. Uh, you know, the, the luxury that we all have is that it requires very little preparation. There's not a lot of rehearsal. The words are in your hand and the words are magic. I mean, Acker and Blacker, what they put on the page is so good. And the people that they give you to work with are so good that uh, failure is not possible. Uh, step up your game, Clooney, Pitt, <laughs> Damon. Yep. You think you can do funny voices? Can you hang with us? Uh, I would say uh, be ready to get hugged a lot because <laughs> backstage it's a super handsy cast. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, <laughs> we should end the interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> So where can your fans see you guys next? Um, the podcast, uh, we've still got new episodes of the podcast uh, coming up. There's, uh, we're making some announcements today uh, in just a little while. I don't know what we can, uh, this is Nothing. live on television. We, we can't, can't tease yeah. anything. We can't tease anything. Um, but there's the Thrilling Adventure Hour world is expanding. Okay. Anything you guys can add to that? Uh, follow us on Twitter, I suppose. I'm at Mark Evan Jackson, M A R C E V A N J A C K S one. At Kikowski, just like it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm at Mark Gags. Awesome. And you guys have an extremely devoted fan base. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans before we go today? Thank you, and we love you <laughs> like crazy. Thank you, and we love you like crazy. <laughs> we love you like crazy. And thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your time here at New York and at Comic-Con today. Thank you. Thank you.